ability to understand how it works. To understand how it works. To understand how it works. Live from Indianapolis, Indiana, this is the iPad Possibility Show. With your host, Tim Chapman, and co host, Ryan Anderson. Welcome to the iPad Possibilities Podcast, episode number 22, week one with our iPads. Well, welcome, and this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast. I'm Tim. I'm here with John and Ryan, and I'd like to also mention this podcast is supported and sponsored by the It's On My Way iPhone application found in the App Store for $2.99. With that app, quickly plan out your route for your afternoon as you pick up uh, checks at the bank, pick up groceries, whatever you need to do. You can do that with It's On My Way for $2.99. So uh, I'm here with John and Ryan. And uh, we've had our iPads for a week now. What do you guys think about them so far? Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, people are like, hey, guess what? It's a big iPod Touch, but until you get one in your hand, it's an awesome big iPod Touch to be surfing the web, doing all kinds of stuff with. What am I doing? What I've done. Hey, did you see how quickly AirShare or Air Video updated and they didn't charge us for it? Right. I love you, Air Video. Whatever you, else you guys put out, I'm buying. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty pretty awesome to be able to, to do that and, uh, and uh, just watch that video without really coding it for the iPad. It's pretty awesome. Evernote is very cool, but I'll let Tim talk about that. He's more that's, Evernote. Yeah, we'll user. get to that app later. That's one of my, uh, yeah, that's one of my top two apps. We're gonna get to apps later. I have to fix something in the show. I'm accidentally broadcasting well, under uh, John's let's, stream. Let's do this. Uh, let's go around the table and talk about. You know, Tim couldn't wait. I, I could it. Or he bought one on his way home. It's in Cincinnati because I, I, they would have closed by the time I got there. Yeah, he couldn't wait. To, no, he could not. After playing around with mine all day and doing some of those videos that we did, he's just like, ah, I can't, I can't handle it. So we'll include Tim in this. What are the first like three apps you downloaded? Why don't we go around the table on that? So go ahead, Tim. I want to hear you first. Okay, uh, my first three. Actually, what do you think about saying what's in our doc? I think that says a lot more than when we just download first. What do you think of doing that? Well, okay. So I, I don't really remember what I downloaded first, to be honest. I downloaded a bunch at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in my doc, I've got Safari, Mail, the built-in Mail client. I got Logos, uh, the Bible Reader. I've got Evernote. I've got We Rule for the iPad and the iPod application. Okay, so uh, one thing I, ha- I have to preface this with two things is as I haven't really customized my doc yet to what I'm always going to use because I'm still like trying out so many things. But, um, right now I have Safari. I have right pad for the iPad. I have Evernote mail photos and iPod. Hmm. Okay, cool. I have, I have right pad as well installed. I'm still trying to get a hang of the interface to make it usable. It's not the most easy to learn application. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking it's it's pretty good. Um, it's it's very close to the recognition of the Newton. I'm finding. Yeah, I am too. Which I always loved. Yeah, um, I just need a glove to make sure I don't touch my side of my hand on the screen when I'm writing. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm pretty good with that. But the one thing I, I I tried to get a stylus. I got a cheap stylus, and uh, when I got it, I found it wasn't going to help at all because you have to press so hard with the stylus um i, I probably need one of those uh pogo style stylus. yeah the funny yeah. thing that happened to me as well i bought the cheap stylus that i just saw a link to you know it was cheaper than the pogo stylus and it didn't work at all when i got it you had to press down really hard as you're saying and then i picked up a pogo stylus when i um well I was at the apple store in cincinnati and it works great it's fantastic 
Yeah, yeah. it's odd that you have to push down too because this screen yeah. seems so much more sensitive. Well, the the, the deal the deal with the stylus, the cheap stylus I have is it's it's really like a half of a rubber ball at the end. And I think you don't get enough mass until you press and the rubber deforms enough to get enough contact with the screen for it to register. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, isn't the uh, Pogo stylus uh, flatter, Tim? Yeah. It's almost got a totally flat end, which from what I remember when I saw it. Yeah. It's uh, pre it's pretty flat. It's rounded as well. But I've, okay. I've been trying to use the iPod quite a iPad quite a bit at uh, work, and uh, you know, WritePad has has taken some notes for me, and it's it's been handy. Um, I've also taken notes with the typewriter and using like Notepad or or uh, I'm I'm going to start using Evernote this this week. I I haven't really downloaded it until the middle of last week. So um, the one thing I'm missing is is without 3G, um, I I work in uh in information security and so we have our network tied down pretty tight and we don't allow non-work assets on the network oh. so consequently i can't put my ipad on the wireless so it's kind of very standalone when i'm at work yeah it's not much fun without the wireless when you're out in the battle or at work yeah yeah so i'm really looking to see when i can swing getting a, a 3g model yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how many of the Wi-Fi versions end up on eBay as people upgrade to right. 3G. And yeah. Apple has a, and Best Buy has a two-week return policy, so a lot of people might be just returning it in two weeks and waiting a few days till the 3G ships. Hmm. Interesting. It's like well, 50 bucks or whatever if you got the low end to do that. But The ones that I find that I've used the most this week uh i'm in the same camp as tim is we rule uh playing around with that game tim what's your username i need a friend i'm possibly 10 okay now everybody will be your friend yeah uh yeah send those friend requests and the plus network uh, i'm addicted to we rule i heard about an app slappy and ever since i'm i love that the fact that this game uh you can put it on your iphone and your ipad and it does it through the you know the internet tells you where you are with your game and that's just crazy yeah you have to be connected my username is uh k4-tt so you can uh, friend me there and uh air video obviously i already mentioned that the built-in safari application and uh i i've done a little bit of reading on here with the iBooks, some of the the open source books uh, looking at King Arthur's Canterbury Tales and stuff, just trying to get an idea, sense of it, and comparing it to Kindle app. Mm -hmm. um, I like them both. And uh, weather bug I use, you know, check the weather. Um, and playing around with that Raging 8 HD, still not quite used to steering that way. Yeah. Uh, but those are the ones I have to say I've, I've used the most. Oh, and Sketchbook, because I really liked sketchbook on the iphone and the interface is a little different on sketchbook pro for the ipad and i'm finding it a little harder to get used to after being so used to it on uh on the iphone the other app i use quite a bit is the ebay app to check stuff out like i was checking out what ipads were going for and i have to say i hope ebay is going to update this app because you can't get to your inbox and stuff Oh, I didn't the iPhone that. app seems to be what more full featured than the iPad version. Yeah. So, but um, one thing I, I I do need to say is I did not see WritePad. So, looking in the App Store, John, it's got three stars. What what's your take on WritePad? You know, it's um, it's not for everyone. Um, I mean, I I know I I can bet that a lot of people are not. Um, looking for that handwriting recognition or it's, or it's not working for them. Just like the Newton was plagued with people that it worked great for and other people that it didn't work well for at all. Although I think with WritePad, they've provided enough options. And unfortunately, a lot of iPhone and iPad applications that have options, people never really go in and explore those options. 
Mm -hmm. You know, they just start using it. And and I know that, that WritePad does have a number of options that would help it work better for some people uh, that it doesn't work out of the box for. But uh, it works well for me. The Newton always worked well for my handwriting. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of it. But, okay. So I, was, I was pretty disappointed that they charged 10 bucks for it seemed like the same iPhone version they had, but just blown up and looking pretty. Was that your take? Do you have it on the iPhone? It, I felt I, I, a little I gouged do, there. Yeah, I do have it on the iPhone and, and I did notice enough differences that, you know, I don't worry about giving them a, a few extra bucks for it. Um, okay. I'll have to go in and play with it. See what they added. Yeah. I didn't there, see much. There's a number of options in there and um, that I didn't, now, it's been a while since I poked around the iPhone app, but it seemed like the iPhone app was pretty bare bones as far as some of those things. And there's a, quite a few options that they've uh, enabled in the iPad. Yeah. Well, I'd like to move on to some quick news and reactions. As most people are probably aware, uh, the operating system for the iPhone 4.0 was debuted on Thursday. And... I, I, it's my belief they'll have a bunch of new features for the iPad version since they're uh, releasing that in fall. I'm imagining they'll finish up development in the summer with the iPhone, and then right after that, they'll give devs the preview of the iPad version to start testing for fall release. Is that your take on it too, John and Ryan? Or? Yeah, yeah I mean, pretty this, much. This is pretty typical. So, yeah, I would I would suspect that that would... I, yeah. would, I would suspect that it'll probably... Be, don't you think, John? It might even be like a 4.1 for the iPad. They might do the same thing they just did. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, what we really don't understand is is why, you know, there is the delay. I've heard a lot of different speculation. Um, so, you know, without knowing that specifically, I don't know that we'll be able to guess whether whether we'll see the same 4.0 or whether it'll be 4.1. And and if we do see a 4.1, will it just be a 4.1 on the iPad or will it be 4.1 across all platforms? Yeah, I would think at some point they're going to need to... I would think Apple would want them on the same version. Just Yeah, they don't want an Android mess. Right. Yeah, just for simplicity. But uh, it my first take on it when I heard that, when I watched the keynote, and... Congratulations to Apple for actually getting that keynote out relatively quick. Uh, I believe it was available later that night to download. Usually you have to wait a couple of days. And um, But my first take was, yep, us iPhone developers are, and not developers, but iPhone users are uh, beta testing again. <laughs> I think they're just, you know, the iPhone is the test bed for this. Right, this stuff, yeah. So. And well, you know, what's your I, favorite features from the seven tenth pole features that we saw, was it multitasking or folders? What appealed to you guys the most? Well, John, what were you going to say before? I'm oh, sorry about that. Yeah, no, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, Ryan. All right. Oh, um, I would, I think I'll have to lean towards multitasking, and I think I had a feeling that they wouldn't have full on multitasking. Um, I'm a little interested as a developer how they're going to do the safe state. I mean, people are. Uh, technically, if you follow the the iPhone guidelines, developer guidelines or UI guidelines, you're supposed to save state anyway. When you come back to your app, you're supposed to be in the same place. And a lot of apps just, you know, they don't take the time to do that. Um, so I don't know if Apple's going to come up with a real cool uh, API call that that just serializes the app out to disk, out to memory, and restores it for you you know i don't know but uh i'm okay with the way they did it actually uh I, did he give any did he give any indication of how many apps you can run because it looks like it might only be you know it looked like an endless number from the video we saw and then it also looked like from other videos on youtube that you can hold down in that multitasking interface and delete apps okay that are running if you don't want them running. I think it's yeah. a cool way they did it. I, I'll give them that. So, John, what's I, your take? I, I think I think it'll be it'll be useful. Um, there, the the way they did it seems to be really um, the right 
the smart way to do it on a, on a, a limited device like a phone. I mean, because, you know, you're, you're kind of going into this suspend mode and, and, uh, you know, not taking up power away from what the user's doing, but, but switching back to it very quickly. I mean, it, it harkens back to the old, uh, multitasking that the original Mac OS had before, before OS 10, uh, which was that kind of preemptive multitasking where you just kind of go into a suspend state and, and everything's back there when you, when you need it. Now, from what I understand with things like, uh, like they showed with, with Skype and, and, uh, with some of the other things is that there are some abilities of a process to do something um, while it's in that suspend state or, you know, some work can be done without being a, a memory hog. Um, I, I, I'm guessing that besides going in there and, and canceling things yourself, that the system is going to manage that. I mean, that's what Apple's always been concerned about, right, is um, overloading the system with, with memory used up by all these apps that are, are not being actively used. And that would that used to be a, a tremendous problem on on uh, Windows Mobile when it when it was first the first few iterations of Windows Mobile was that you could have a bunch of apps running you know in the background even if they weren't doing anything they're just hogging up memory and then you get to the point where you can't launch new apps because the memory's not available for it and so uh, I'm hoping that Apple has implemented it in such a way that you know some apps will end up being quit essentially by the system when you run out of memory. Um, and, th and that actually may be one of the things that, that we need to, uh, to look at. You know, there, I heard a lot of people complaining about the 3G not being able to run multitasking or the, or the original 2G kind of iPhone. And, and I bet that's simply because of memory, because the, the, the 3GS has twice as much real processing memory as as the 3g and to multitask you're going to need that memory well right. i wonder if they're gonna you know if if you're gonna have to mark your app as multitask you know as an application that can do multitasking you do gonna you do def okay you do out of the box you just have fast app switching i believe from what we showed in the keynote that uh the the API is available to developer, but they have to enable those. What was really cool, what I really saw, the Skype integration was incredible. I didn't think they'd go that far out to make it. It looked like a phone replacement. It had the same exact features as you would your built-in phone, and that's incredible. I never thought I'd see that happen. Well, that's cool for the iPad users like you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to be a, a great thing, and, and it's even going to be better on the iPad um, because the iPad is so much more geared to productivity kind of things where you do need to jump quickly between one app to the other and, and quickly get back, right? I mean, right now we have the ability to for one app to say, oh, well, this piece of data needs to be opened by something else, and it can call that, and we can start up an app but then getting back to where you started is always a problem. And uh, so this multitasking should make the iPad experience even even better. Right. Now beyond that, I, I like the folder things next, which was the second thing he talked about. Thank goodness we can, uh, it's not perfect solution, um, but I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, it looks really fantastic. I, I'm I'm with you, Ryan. I, I I think it's it it looks like a good solution. I I'm not necessarily super thrilled with it. Um, you know, I, I things have been floating on the internet for probably over a year now about different ways of of possibly changing the iPhone OS to to manage all the apps that we're now dealing with, and I I think I've liked a few of those ideas better than you know, creating a folder is a, of, of what up to, did they say 12, 12 apps could be in a folder? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's useful, but you know, people are going to have games one, games two, games three, you know, they're, we're going to have a lot of folders with 
applications that we have a lot of and that will make it you know less than intuitive i think when you have a bunch of game folders try to remember which one the game you're looking for is in yeah i think people will divide it up between you know racing game folder and whatever yeah things like that yeah so somebody was talking about this um I, i think on one of the other podcasts after the the announcement and they were saying that i think it was alex lindsay he was saying yeah, I already have so many apps that if you put more apps than you have screens, they're on there. You just can't get to them. Right. And he found that he was just searching for them anyway using the search screen. So if you have all this stuff buried, like John's saying, in folders, you're probably still going to use the search screen because you can't find them. It'll still look prettier, though, you know, rather than 12 <laughs> screens well, that's full of counts, apps. Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing that I'll probably not use folders on on like the first few screens where i have the apps that i use all the time and then i'll i'll have folders on later screens where stuff that just is going to be buried for the seldom used things and and then i probably will be using the search screen for those apps i think docs with folders putting folders into the doc will be incredibly useful so you could have all your messaging tools like twitter uh your phone your text messaging all that in one location skype whatever Put it all down there, and if you need to talk to or communicate with anybody, you just launch that folder. I think that'll be really helpful. Along yeah. the same lines, I wonder if uh, they'll update. I don't know. You have the preview, that Tim. Uh, if you can rotate the home screen like you can on the iPad. I doubt they'd ever enable that, just because they. You want when you pick up your iPhone to not be worried about how you're holding it because you can pick it up in different ways and you don't want rotating all the way around like you do with an iPad. Yeah, I I agree. It's a, it's a different, different kind of device than the iPad. Um, And it it would also make things a little bit more difficult. I think it'd be kind of awkward to see your, your uh, icons with, you know, just a couple of rows and really far across. I mean, I wish they'd add that because I remember a couple of months ago when I was in Safari, you have it landscape, and then you exit out of that. I've always wanted to just let me keep it landscape and go to my other app, which is also landscape, and that's been, been an annoyance on the iPhone, but I don't think they'll change that at all. Yeah, the, um, the other thing that I thought was uh, out of the seven, which was really cool, was the, uh, the email, the universal email box that... Uh, for me, that will be a, a big uh, improvement. Yeah, and a lot of people have been wanting that. And i got to say, I'm one of those probably very few that is a little worried about it. I hope it's an option because I have like seven mail accounts on mine, and I don't want it all mixed together. Right. Oh, yeah, they, they did indicate that you could uh, somewhere in there. I remember, I don't know, it was one of the questions afterwards. They indicated that you could have a separate you know account or you could combine them yeah they called it fast inbox switching so you yeah. have uh, at the very top of your folder what they showed off in the demo you have fast you have your unified inbox and right below that the inboxes of all the other accounts so you don't have to go through and find the other inboxes right oh okay it's just a unified at the top of everything but all the other accounts are still below it yeah okay uh, I want to move on past 4.0. I think other shows cover that well, and I think we'll be talking about this more once it gets closer to the release date for the iPad. But some initial reactions to the first week with the iPad with the keyboard. I was, has anybody else experienced this where you're typing and you reach the point where you put the period in? And since you're so used to the iPhone going to that separate screen to enter a period, you don't even realize it's on that main oh, screen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely, and and then there's other punctuation as well that you know we're we're not used to having on on the on-screen keyboard on that first screen, and I'm always hitting the the number change <laughs> over to the keyboard, and it's like uh, I don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, one thing that if you hold the exclamation point key, it uh, has the apostrophe, so you can have possessions or whatever without leaving there. That's something I'm gonna have to learn more quickly how to utilize that. Personally. Uh, I was a big Palm user and developer, um, and I miss having the shortcuts 
for commonly used things like entering a date real quick. You guys remember those? Mm-hmm. I would love I'm... to see um, a place in settings where you can program shortcuts like dates and phrases that you say a lot and hold down and you can assign them to a key on the keyboard. So you know how you hold down K and you get all this extra K's in other languages or whatever, you know, to have it pop up one of your phrases in a list. That's what I'd like to see. Did anything yeah. surprise you guys about the iPad the first week? Was there anything that you didn't think would be in there that was in there? Or any just quirks and things you've experienced? Well, I've been... Um... And this is not the, a ding necessarily on the iPad, but I, but I have been a little underwhelmed with iWork for the iPad. Uh, I had really hoped that iWork would be very close to the equivalent of what it is on, on the Macintosh, and it's not. I mean, they're good applications, don't get me wrong, but they're, they're, they, leave, they have a, quite a few holes that make it less than ideal. Yeah, I didn't get numbers. I got pages and Keynote because those two, you know, I thought on a device this size, it made sense to have a decent word processor. And Keynote's something I've always wanted to play with. I still haven't bought it for the Mac, and I, I keep waiting because I'm expecting 2010 to come out here any minute, and I don't want to buy it twice. But Keynote's fun to play with. Pages um, I find very annoying because... In portrait mode, you have the toolbar at the top, but the small keyboard. And when you go to, you know, landscape with the better, easier to type on keyboard, you don't have the toolbar at the top. So you can't, <laughs> you don't, you have to keep rotating it every time you want to go to options and change your land. You know, they they need to add the toolbar to portrait mode, and I'd like it a lot. I mean, to landscape mode, and I'd like it a lot better. One thing I've noticed is my iTunes cover art, I need to go through and just replace that with all high-res stuff because it's really obnoxious looking at the lock screen with that low-res stuff that I'm that was fine on the iPhone. That's just not cutting it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, another, another little disappointment I had was uh, with the Mail app. And one of the things that I'm used to doing is I turn off... Uh, pictures in in my mail um you know and i typically do that on the mac side and i and i do that for security reason you know so that i don't get these little images that are reporting back that i read the mail or or anything like that and then when i come across something i actually want to see the pictures on the mac you just there's a little button you show images and you get to see the images um i can't find anything on the ipad to show me the images i just like it's not there. I turn turn it off in preferences, and then when I'm in the mail, there is no way I can I can look at any images. Uh, so, if any of our listeners happen to know how to do that on a on a email by email basis, uh, let us know because I'd love to do that. But right now, it's it's like an all or nothing thing, which means that I don't see any images in any of my emails. Yeah, hopefully they'll they'll add that here soon. I think maybe they just you know, it's typical they they leave these little things out just so they can get it out the door. Yeah, yeah. One thing I'd like to see happen is a third party dock be made that can hold my Apple case in it. Uh, do you think that's possible? Can they create a dock that can actually fit the iPad with the case on it? Well, you know that it's it's the way this case is made is it's a little unusual in the, the seam that, that runs along the bottom there. So um, I suppose anything is possible. I'm not sure that uh, that anybody's going to be jumping up and, and trying to make that kind of dock. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting another case that uh, maybe works a little better with docking. Either that or I'm, I'm going to look at, I'm also going to look at some stands that, aren't necessarily made for the iPad, but maybe you can plug in the dock cable and either use it in portrait or landscape sitting in a, a third-party stand. Yeah, InCase has some nice rubber cases like you would on an iPhone that come with a stand. Um, you know, Apple sells them 
They're a little yeah. expensive, but you can get them online cheaper. I bought the Apple case too because it looked cool. Uh, I don't think it's a great case. Uh, the seam, like John mentioned, is kind of weird. I don't understand why they didn't do that a little differently. I found the iPad difficult to get in the first time. After that, it was quite easy to get in, but it's imp it's very difficult to get it out of the case. Um, I also got a the standard dock, and of course, it won't fit in there because not necessarily because of the seam, but because of the thickness of the case. I mean, it's, it's very, a very thin case, though. At the same time, yeah, but it it still won't fit in there. Right. I mean, it's a very tight tolerance, and. So I've actually thought it's just like scuba suit material of just trimming out uh, where the case would fit. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that I you might not even need a dock with this case because of the way it folds up and things like that. Uh, I think you could do without a dock, perhaps. Well, I'll tell you, Tim, I've had it and I put it in a dock once. And what I do is I just leave it in the case and I plug it in. In, in landscape mode, fold it up. Yeah, that's what I do too. very convenient to use next to my computer that way. The, the case is good. At, you know, I, I've, I've used the case uh, typing, you know, so you can put it kind of in that low profile of just slightly propped up from the desk, and that works really well. Um, I, I don't find that the case works as well, or at least it doesn't seem real sturdy when I, when I put it up higher on end or, or whatnot. Um, yeah, mine doesn't either. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean it works, but um, it just I just am thinking all the time about how precarious it seems to be uh, in that position and how expensive it is. <laughs> and the material on the case itself picks up everything. Yeah, it does. I yeah, mean, it does. the slightest smudge, speck of dust, it's just hard. It's almost impossible. It's almost as hard to keep it clean as the screen. <laughs> But uh, it's it's not a bad case. It, I think for what's out there right now, it's one of the better ones. One but thing we'll I've see more. one thing I've noticed with the charging of it, I haven't had a problem charging it, but I have had a problem where it says it's completely charged at ninety three percent. And I've noticed if you just leave it in there, it will charge up to hundred percent. They've got a bug with the icon, but it still works charging. I find the battery life on this thing unbelievable. It, it is phenomenal. Um, First couple of nights I had it, I, I would plug it in at night and it would be all charged up in the morning. And then for a couple of nights, I forgot to plug it in. And it's still going strong, you know, three days later. So, <laughs> like. Have you guys found any favorite iBooks in the store that, you know, you've had these favorite books and now you have them on your iPad through the Apple store? I haven't bought any books yet. I'm only checking out the free ones. I've spent enough on applications. <laughs> yeah, I found that the samples are incredible because I got about 20 books done through samples, and they give you, you know, three or four chapters, sometimes half the book and samples. So by the time you're at that point, you can decide, do I want to buy this or not? Now, see, I've had the opposite case with samples in, the, in some of the books that I've looked at. Um, the samples had so much... Uh, you know, copyright information oh, and, yeah. and stuff like that, that it might have been a 20 page sample, but there were like two pages of actual story oh. uh, in the sample. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not expecting that they're going to go out of their way to, you know, to give me something for free. But well, they I've, gave I've, you Winnie the Pooh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually uh, enjoyed being able to make EPUBs myself and put them into iBooks. Well, that's what I was going to ask next. Has anyone done that? I haven't messed with that yet. Yeah. I have. I haven't done it a great deal, but I'm starting to scan in content that I own and make my own EPUBs. And it's a very laborious process of doing that. Yeah, but once you create the the EPUB, is it quite easy to get it into iBooks? Oh, yeah. Just it's really simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, uh, I've only done a couple, and they were... They were PDFs, and I just I just easily converted them. Um, they weren't ideal, you know. I probably should have played around because I think I got like extra chapter headers and and a few things like that. Um, so they're not ideal, and as I do more of them, I'll figure out what I have to do to prevent some of those things from happening. But it's very usable, and 
it's a uh, it's a great experience to be able to to read on this device. Well, I wanted to move ahead to some of the coolest use cases you found for the iPad this week. I'll open it by saying a few hours ago, I actually had a concert I play uh, in a wind ensemble at the university I go to. And I've been playing with an application called Fourscore, which just came out on Saturday. And I scanned in all my music I needed for the concert. And I actually used my iPad instead of paper to play the concert. And it went really well. Uh, page string was really easy and had a bunch of nice features to make it a good experience. So, Tim, how, how do you turn the page? There, You just tap or, you know, flick like you do in iBooks, but you just tap the bottom right corner or bottom left corner to turn pages. And it flipped over and turned pages really quickly. And if it's in landscape mode, if you just flick, it'll take you to the second half of the page. It doesn't worry about how hard you flick or anything like that. It'll just make sure you get to that second half really easily. It'd be uh, it'd be really interesting if they found some other way of flipping that music for you that, you know, you didn't have to flip the page like you did with with uh, paper. Right. I still find it easier though doing it this way than physically moving a whole sheet of paper over. It was a lot simpler than I'm used to. Sure, just tapping it. Just yeah. It and another cool thing with practicing music on the iPad, it had a visual metronome, so the border of the screen flashed black and white giving you a metronome so visually it really drives the beat of the music into what you're practicing did you guys have any just unexpected use cases that you didn't think would be happening this week or you know i i didn't and and i probably didn't because again my my issue with really getting to use it as much as i'd like to without any wi-fi connectivity um but and and also sh just end up showing it off to so many people, um, kind of cut into some of my uh, my exploratory time. But uh, what I'm what I'm really looking for, and I, I'm I'm surprised I haven't seen it yet, and, and maybe it's out there and I haven't come across it, is is uh, some type of uh, of surveying or checklist kind of uh, application, and uh, yeah. I'm sure that it's something that, like Omni Outliner, would would fit the bill, but uh, I haven't really seen anything yet to uh, to do that. Yeah, I, I definitely see a use case for you know somebody at a mall or a shopping center store holding one of these things, asking somebody to take a quick survey. Which is it surprises me because there are several survey kinds of applications on the iPhone and I haven't seen any of them come over yet. I didn't have any specific use cases that surprised me either. I, uh, I, you know, being an iPhone user from the day it came out, you know, I, I, something would really have to knock my socks off to surprise me. I think I was more surprised by, like I stated earlier, the, the toolbar not being in pages in landscape mode, I thought it was quite annoying. I had a couple other use cases. Some of these I've talked about before. Uh, the first, uh, the other one was VNC in my Mac Mini. Uh, with the Mac Mini, you're able to not use the display keyboard or mouse and remote into it, so I actually recorded an entire week's worth of shows at my friend's house with the iPad as the display and keyboard and the Mac Mini as the thing doing all the work and using the expensive mic to record the shows on. And that worked extremely well. I was kind of surprised by how simple that was. You know what I will say? Not so much on surprise me good, but surprise me bad. I think Steve and the gang really pushed, oh, you can run 150,000 apps. I have to say that I, I can't think of one app that I use regularly on the iPad that that is an old iPhone app because the app's just... They look terrible when they when you scale them up, and the fact that you use the old iPhone keyboard and the fonts aren't scaled correctly, it, they just look bad. So I just don't use them. Yeah, I've gone through actually for this show. We're gonna talk about later some iPhone apps I found that work well with this, and most of the times it's the games that translate well if they're done right. But everything else, I'd agree with you there. They they don't translate over too well. 
Now I've uh, I actually have uh, one little game I, I play all the time that um, it actually plays better on the iPad even though it's not an iPad game than it does on the iPhone, and that's because it's uh, it's got this map and you have to like you know indicate where you're going to move your troops, and some of the countries are so small that you, at least my big finger doesn't always hit the right country. And so blowing it up two times makes that game uh, more enjoyable, actually. So, okay. Well, but, I, one of my favorite games was Space Miner on the iPhone, and they haven't updated that for the iPad. And it, with my hands, it's unplayable on the iPad because I can't reach both controls. <laughs> right, right. So. I actually am, am still using a number of iPhone apps um, that haven't converted, but the, but they're typically like utility kind of things. Um, you know, I, in, in my job, I uh, I do stuff with overseas uh, purchasing and, and so currency conversion and uh, you know some of, some things like that. Looking up area code area codes or zip codes. Um, you know, and those tools they're not. It's not a big deal that the graphics don't look good. Uh, you're just trying to really jump in there real quick and get some information and get out. So um, I'm still using those kind of things. What I am surprised that hasn't been updated is Bing. Yeah. And it's uh, that's kind of surprising to me. Yeah, because I thought it was actually kind of nice on the iPhone. Yeah, yeah I've I mean, never I, played with it at all. I'm a, I, I'm a Google guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I uh, you know I don't I don't use it all the time, but uh, you know sometimes it gets different results. Um, and so I'm kind of disappointed it hasn't uh, made the move over. Yeah. A final use case that we were talking about before the show is using your iPad as kind of a satellite computer when you're working on your main computer. And one great example of this I experienced today, I was watching Twit tonight, and they've got the TwitPad app for the iPad, and it's one of the few apps that's taking advantage of the VGA output. So I was actually able to connect uh, my iPad to my monitor. It's a 24-inch monitor. And use a VGA output. And the reason for doing this is my Mac Mini was busy encoding video. And I didn't want to uh, take up CPU processes on the Mac Mini. So it was incredibly useful just having that as a second computer that, hey, I can stream video off of this and do other computer like things yeah it's it's a really uh gonna be very good with that i i i've been uh looking at the different vnc uh clients as well and uh, as you mentioned you you did with uh i teleport um i've been looking at some of the other ones uh to determine which which one i'm gonna jump into the the old one that i have uh hasn't been updated for the ipad and that's probably one thing that you really can't effectively utilize the old version uh, with, the, with the iPad too well. Yeah, the only reason I jumped on iTelport's bandwagon was the setup. They uh, configured so literally, I mean, you're probably better at setting these things up than I am. And I had especially hard time setting these things up because I'm on a university network, which is highly secure, and you can't get past any firewalls or anything. But the way iTelport does it, they use Google's login and do some magic where they get behind even the most secure firewalls to connect you anywhere in the world to your computer. So that's why I jumped on iTelport's uh, application. So do you, do you uh, from both sides, do you have to connect to Google or give it your Google credentials? Yeah, from both sides. There's two yeah. applications you run the Mac and then uh, you so just... So if, if you're interested, just a little background on that. So uh, most firewalls are really designed so that they're not going to let in something that wasn't requested from inside. So like if you go somewhere and request information back it can come back through a different pathway but because it was requested by you the firewall will let it through um, and so what what this is essentially doing is allowing both sides to go to google and make that request and google just kind of exchanges between the two and passes it along so it, it looks like you know from both sides it looks like you you started the conversation from in, inside the firewall to outside, even though you're actually going from one side of the firewall to the other. Okay. So I wish Air Video would add that feature because that's one thing that's bothering me. I can't access Air Video anywhere in the world yet. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, another app that I, I tried this week with um, some success, but not too much, was iDisplay, uh, which uh, allowed you to use your your iPad or iPhone as a as extended display for your for your computer. And uh, I got it to work. It's incredibly slow, and the first version of the it, it requires. You pay for the software on your iPad, and then you get a free piece of software for your Mac, or I think it's also available for the PC. Um, unfortunately, it's it's you, you move something onto this now new screen, which happens to be your iPad, and everything on that screen is a is at a crawl. I mean, you you, you move, try to move the window over there, and I actually had kind of like a, a a time loop going on because I moved a, a window over to my iPad and, uh, and then I, came, I moved it back. And for a while I had the image still on my iPad as well as the window on my, on my main screen. Um, cause it's just that slow. So, uh, it, it looks like it'll be great stuff when it is really fully realized, but, uh, there's a lot of work to still be done. Well, I want to move into, as you were starting to talk about, some favorite apps that you've been playing with. Uh, the first app I wanted to talk about was Evernote. And if you followed me uh, Saturday, I showed this off quite a bit because it just it's so incredible. Uh, the coolest thing I thought of when using it, and this is something I actually requested. I was on the beta testing program for the iPhone, and I suggested they do this, and it was cool to see that they added this that you can now record audio at the same time as you type notes and even beyond that the way Evernote works is it's pseudo multitasking where it's uh, saves the state of the application so you can exit out of the app without saving your note and run into Omni Graffle or some other graphing or sketching tool and save some sketch or whatever to the photo gallery and right there in Evernote, import that file in. So you can literally create whatever note and information you need right there on the iPad. And I'm also just blown away by the interface of accessing your notes. The way Places now works is as you zoom into the location where you took those notes, the notes on the sidebar change as you get closer and closer in so you don't have to open anything up they just automatically update as you move around and then save searches are finally accessible via the interface and i'm just blown away by this i think it's the best version of evernote they've ever created and it's on the ipad which is really cool yeah i'll, I'll uh, echo that it's it's really really nice the the only thing is as ryan indicated early when we first got on the phone is we can't uh, use shared notebooks uh on the application but other than that i mean for my own uh for my own notes it's it's really a, a great a great look and a great feel uh, so it's a it's a win for evernote i think yeah and but, i've heard they're actually adding the ability to add like a sketch pad type interface into the new note field in a couple of months here they're working on that so it's going to only get even more powerful with you being able to stay in the application and draw things out and map things out however you need it. Okay. Did uh, you guys have any favorite apps that we haven't talked about yet or you wanted to talk a little bit more about? Yeah, I'll throw one out there. Um, iZen Garden for the iPad. I don't know if uh, either of you ever had a chance to look at iZen Garden for the iPhone. Kind of a cool thing for if you know what Zen Gardens are. They're the, the Japanese... Uh, sand garden, really meditative kind of thing. And, you know, it, it was one thing for it to be on a little tiny iPhone screen, but not only is it so much better on a larger screen and much more tranquil, if you will, uh, but actually the uh, the interface changes and the, and the different things that have been done there are, are really phenomenal. Um, one of the things that I find truly truly great is you can even as you tilt the ipad the shadows beneath like if you put rocks or something on on the sand the shadows beneath the rocks move to to go co coincide with with your 
consulting of the iPad. Oh wow, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's 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 phenomenally done, and uh, you know, if you haven't seen it before, go check it out. Eisen Garden. I finally caved and got Plants vs Zombies HD. I resisted it on the iPhone, but I've heard it talked about so many times by other people on different podcasts, and I'm I can say I'm addicted to Plants and Zombies HD. Finally. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I haven't bought it yet. I keep hearing the same thing, Tim, and I never bought it on the iPhone, and every time I pass by it in the App Store, if it was cheaper, I probably would have bought it already, but uh, I don't know. I don't I don't want to pay $10 for something that's going to suck all my time. Yeah, it was funny because <laughs> I haven't bought an iPhone apps in a really long time because I always knew there's going to be an iPad version of these apps, and I'm not going to want to play these on my iPhone ever pretty much. So, Tim, a, a couple of things that um, seem pretty good to me, a neophyte uh, in the world of uh, music, but Pro Keys and also a Jam Pad, which I think are both free, um, look to be like fun little, little uh, apps for, for doing uh, creative music. Yeah, I played with Pro Keys the other day, and that's a great app. I actually... The last episode is an experimental episode I released. I had the last 10 minutes was me playing in Pro Keys, and you can do some pretty cool things in that app. And Magic Piano, Air Harp, and Accordion were also a lot of fun to uh, kind of experiment with and play with. Yeah, I tried Jam Pad. That was the only one I've tried so far. It's, I, I think it's kind of neat how the keyboard moves as you go up an octave or down an octave, but I don't know how usable it would be. It's... I took piano years ago and kind of let it go by the wayside, so I'm not real sure how how playable it is. Did you have any apps, Ryan, that you haven't talked about that you want to talk about tonight? Um, well, I will say that uh, my wife and I, on that weekend, the, the Sunday after getting the iPad, um, tried Scrabble. Grabbed my son's iPod Touch and my iPhone and we uh sat down and tried to play a game of scrabble and we didn't i didn't use bluetooth i just used wi-fi and we kept having problems it kept disconnecting dropping us in the middle of a game and we'd have to restart and so there were some wi-fi issues so i guess i'm gonna have to give it another try with bluetooth likewise here we had some issues we got very close to finishing the game we couldn't finish so i think they have some bugs to test and finish out because it is a 1.0 release, and I'm not sure if EA had iPads. Uh, they might have. I'm not sure. but So there's some bugs to fix, and I think they will fix them. I also got uh, the free air hockey. Um, really nice to play on the iPad. You know, Me and my son played it a little bit. Um, that was kind of cool. And, you know, I, I think the biggest thing, uh, I, I'm more of a I, – I love drawing and and any kind of archy stuff so i I gotta get into sketchbook i really got into it on the ipad i mean on the iphone uh and found it limiting so i was really looking forward to it on the ipad i just find the interface not as not that the the interface on the iphone was very intuitive but it's it's different so i i just haven't spent a lot of time with it but that's something like yeah the barble app is pretty cool uh i'm not really a comic book reader but i could see becoming one because it looks so nice i thought that was that was quite nice yeah the marvel is a is a nice uh comic book reader and there's a couple others as well but i i'm i'm kind of partial from what i've seen to the marvel one another thing i'll throw in is the uh, abc player yeah that's uh, cool very very, very cool and, and very nice to be able to go you know, back a few weeks uh, with shows. So uh, sometimes it's not so easy to do, uh, and that's very cool. I was able to catch up on a couple of shows that I was a few weeks behind with. Um, something else that I tried, which was uh, I'll, I'll give a valiant attempt uh, rating to, uh, and that's uh, Camera A. Uh, I don't know if you guys <laughs> yeah, have seen this. yeah, that Camera A and B. Work at camera all A and for B. Me. Um, I, I got it to work. It, it was, you know, not not so thrilling, but it was uh, 
It was an interesting idea. All right, well, I'll throw out some, uh, I have a seven-year-old, I'll throw out some uh, more kid-oriented games. Of course, my son, having an iPod Touch, saw this, and his eyes went about as big as the iPad itself, and said, oh my gosh, a giant iPhone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have to rip it from his cold, dead hands to get it back, right? But uh, I downloaded Toy Story, the free one, and he liked playing around with that. The Scrat Deluxe, which was $5, is uh, a little too remedial for him. I mean, it's for someone even younger. Um, he really liked uh, Flick updated their fishing one, their Flick Fishing HD, and he really likes playing that one. So uh, we also tried the game table. And I know they came out with an update so that your pieces snap. Um, you know, it's it's neat. Yeah, I haven't found a good way to hide your cards when you're playing poker because you can still see if you try to cover them up with your hand. It does. I'm still trying to figure out that kind of way they're doing it. And I also have been playing around with the the Ghost Sky Watch app because you know I've tried all the free high def things, and uh, that's pretty neat. That's the one where, you know, you can see a map of the stars and everything. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one's that one's pretty cool. Sure. Now, well, I was just going to, the one other one that I played with was Adobe came out with Adobe Ideas, which is a simple sketch program, but it's nowhere near Sketchbook, so. Yeah, I tried that one out as well, and it, it just was, uh, I guess not, I guess I'm not enough of, a, of an artist to be, thrilled with it and just yeah the interface is terrible compared yeah. to uh the other one so what about you tim do you have any others well let's see there's a couple that i wanted to mention let's see uh, let's see i think we've covered most of mine i i'm starting to use the iwork apps i'm liking what they are for a, a 1.0 product i think they're i wrote my first paper this week on it and it was very usable doing that I did yeah, it with but the did keyboard. you use the on-screen keyboard? I used the Bluetooth keyboard because, <laughs> I mean, if you're writing a paper, you're going to do that. Right. I, yeah. I could see myself using the on-screen keyboard, but uh, not if I have a keyboard right next to me at my desk. And uh, let's, I think we covered all of them. iBooks I'm very pleased with. I was kind of surprised with how well it worked. And then I also want to mention, I went through all my iPhone apps that were kind of the premium apps of the iPhone back in the day, like uh, Super Monkey Ball and Chromag Rally. I remember the original 2.0 release where uh, the OS 2.0, where they demoed those as, you know, breakthrough applications. And I tried them on the iPad and they worked pretty well. There wasn't too much pixelation and they were very usable. And it, I didn't see a reason to rebuy any of those apps. Yeah, the two you just mentioned have been updated for the iPad, too. Yeah, for 10 bucks or whatever. Uh, right. it, let's see. I'll just run through the apps that worked pretty well on the iPhone right now, just for reference for people listening. I tested Doom Resurrection, which is 7 bucks on the iPhone. It worked really well on the iPad. Hero Sparta worked well. It's 2 bucks on the iPhone. Crow Mag Rally for the iPhone worked really well. It's only $3. Moto Chaser, a buck, worked really well. The racing games work really well, I've been noticing on the iPad. Uh, I've got Monopoly here and now. And the interesting about Monopoly here and now, they don't have an iPad version yet, but it's five bucks, the version I have for the iPhone. And we actually took that out after Scrabble the other night when our family played, and it was the first time they've got the pass and play feature, but I've never done that with the iPhone because... You're only having one person look at the screen at a time, and with the iPad, everyone can see the screen, and it's an enjoyable experience using that iPhone version on the iPad, finally. Uh, before, it was just a single-player game, as I saw it. And then, as I said, Super Monkey Ball, uh, Crash Bandicoot, and Cosmovox, which is a theremin on the iPhone, worked really well. So those were just some of the apps I played with on the iPhone that worked well on the iPad. Okay. Well, I got to head out here soon, Tim. I'm already over what I got to get Okay. Out. Well, let's uh, – But let's... one thing I want to uh, bring up that we haven't talked about, and I wanted to – I haven't tried any of these. I wanted to see if you guys have. But we haven't talked about magazines and newspapers. And as you both know, the press has been talking, oh, is the iPad the savior for these? You know, 
Have you guys tried any, you know, like USA Today's free and stuff? I haven't tried any of these yet. I, I've used USA Today almost daily, and uh, and that's pretty pretty nice. Uh, BBC News, I think, is pretty good. I tried uh, the Associated Press News. I'm not so thrilled about the interface for that. And then the Wall Street Journal, of course, uh, I got like a day, and after that they wanted to charge me, so... I haven't done anything with that. (laughs) I can't say I've never been someone to read the newspaper. I've never really watched the news or anything like that. And I've got USA Today on my iPad, and I read it every day because it's convenient. In the past, I didn't bother to look on the web for it or find the information there. And I'm finding myself using it quite a bit, and that's something to be said. Well, I tell you what, I would use. I would have probably downloaded it already if they would have called it USA Yesterday. <laughs> well, you know, it's it it it's uh, like Tim. I don't, you know, I haven't been uh, much of a newspaper reader um, recently. Um, when I was traveling all the time, and you get free papers at hotels to stay at, I'd read the paper. But it's just something I'm not, I don't pursue. And uh, I, I do now pursue USA Today on the iPad, but it's only going to be free, as I understand it, to like July because it's being uh, sponsored. And oh. uh, I, I, I don't know what it what will be like if I have to pay for it after July. That's going to be not so good. Or what sure. the cost would be, right? Yeah. I had uh, one big announcement I want to announce here in the live show is that next week, next week's live show on the 18th of April, Ken Case of the Omni Group will be with us uh, to talk about the iPad and their products. They do Omni Graffle and Omni Graph Sketcher, and they're working on Omni Outliner, Omni Plan, Omni Focus, and bringing their entire productivity suite to the iPad. And I've been playing around with some of those apps, and they're very impressive and I'm very excited about this because I've long admired their products and their company as a whole. Very yeah, cool, are, Tim. They are certainly some of the, the best uh, Mac products, I, I think, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they are on the, uh, the iPad. I haven't tried either of the two that are out yet, but uh, the... Uh, yeah, I'm working on getting really really promo great. codes for both uh, you and uh, Ryan, so I'm still working on that. And uh, we'll see by next week if we can get those for you. Okay. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, there were two other apps I, I just wanted to just briefly mention. One is Twitterific, which I think is, is a great uh, Twitter client for uh, for the iPad. And the that other one's is free. Yeah, it's free. And okay. the other other app is uh, Pad Notes. Um, one of the things that I've been hoping to do with the iPad is be able to like pull up PDF documents for my work. And be able to, you know, uh, make comments on them and, and highlight sections and, and put um, annotations on it. And uh, Padnote, I've, the few that I've tried, Padnote seems to be the best out of the group. Although it's it's not perfect, so I'm that's an area I'm going to be looking for other apps to come in and see if they can do a better job. But uh, Right now, Pad Note seems to be the best of the breed that I've tried. Okay. Any other final thoughts before we close out this week's show? None for me. Okay. I'll take that uh, as a no. Um, <laughs> where can people find you, Ryan? Um, well, I guess the, the easiest way to find me is go to modelrailcast.com, which is my other hobby, doing model railroading. Uh, i got a podcast over there. It's almost two and a half years old, and... People who are in the model trains pretty much already know about it. But if you need to find me, that's where you can find me. Awesome. And, John, where can uh, people find you on the, the web? Uh, probably look for me on, uh, on Twitter, uh, Jay Finnan on Twitter. Okay, awesome. Um, I'll need one of you to stay in line so I can finish this podcast. Otherwise, Ustream hangs up on us. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll hang up. I'll okay. And, uh, yeah, Ryan, if you have to go, uh, okay. that's fine. Uh, Talk to you guys next week. Okay, sounds See good. You. I just wanted to wrap up this show by giving you guys different ways you can support this show. First off, subscribing in iTunes is always beneficial to the show, just bringing up the visibility of it in iTunes, as well as leaving a review. 
Uh, adding your own content to the show is greatly appreciated by calling in your questions and emailing in at 209-542-IPAD and also at uh, ipadpossibilities at gmail.com. And then uh, monetarily, if you want to help with the show, there's a couple different ways you can do that. First off, uh, the iPad Possibilities podcast app is in the App Store now. It's for $2.99. And with that app, you get the show 24 hours in advance, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, instead of the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday release. And you'll get some bonus shows that I'm, as I'm starting to do right now. And uh, we will start having show notes in the application as I'm seeing a request in the chat room. I'm going to change the website around so it links directly with that Evernote notebook. And I, I'll find a way to do that within the app. And that's coming pretty soon. So I'll show notes right there in the app pretty soon. And then a couple other ways you can help out the show. Uh, there's donations through the possibiliesnetwork.com. You can do that there. And then also by helping out our sponsors, it's on my way in the App Store for $2.99. So until next time, this is the iPad Possibilities Podcast with Tim, Ryan, and John. We will speak again soon.